Okay, guys, let's talk about the Suns, a team that does confuse me, as the title says. And this is not to say they're not good. They are good. In fact, they're like 21-9 and in their last 30 games. And when Beal, Book, and KD are on the court together, they're plus 13 in those lineups. Grayson Allen, I gave role player notice to early in the year. Royce O'Neal already. Like, I was watching that Laker game in the fourth quarter. You've got plays where, like, Royce is screening for KD. And then it's like a kick to Grayson Allen for three in the corner. You know, like, Royce O'Neal does more than just shoot threes on offense, right? I remember in their Houston game they just had, like, there's a play first quarter where he blocks Fred from behind after Fred gets a little bit of separation from him on a drive. Uh, Apparently this is the Royce O'Neal intro. Of course, Nurkic has been good. I mean, when Nurkic is in the game, the Suns are one of the better defensive rebounding teams in the league, and then when he leaves, it falls off kind of fast. And of course, his screen setting and passing is good, and, you know, finding guys on cuts and DHOs. Okay, the reason the Suns confuse me, though, is that with all these nice things, and we'll talk about Bull Bull in a little bit, too, and obviously the shot making around their top three guys, there's just something about this team where I can't get all the way there to be like, oh yeah, they're definitely a contender. And I think some of it is Beal's health, of course. And to be clear, he did have like a 20-game stretch where he was playing. But of course, we know how the start of the season was. And also, he is now currently dealing with a hamstring thing. So there's some of that. If, you know, every, Everybody has already talked about that times where their offense can get just a little too simple pick and roll heavy or simple ISO heavy, even if they also do have times where they really do put pressure on your defense. And so, for example here, I am going a bit far back for this one. This is on January 21st against the Pacers. And, like, look, you've got KD making turnaround jumpers over Jalen Smith from midrange. Uh, you've got him cutting with Nurkic having the ball at the top of the key. You know, KD getting a three off of a Bradley Beal empty corner pick and roll with uh, Nurkic. You know, they, they kind of run that for Book and uh, Beal a bit. Uh, you've got KD screening for Beal to uh, get, like, a Ben Shepard switch. And then from there, Bradley Beal attacks. I remember in a Laker game, not the most recent one, but, like, kind of a while ago, where you would have Beal like screening for KD a little bit, and then he would get open in the middle of the floor because the Lakers would put two on KD, you know. Uh, Book, of course, can run pick and roll with Nurkic, and he's like become so good at the sort of get my defender on my back and then turn it into like a free throw line jumper or a paint turnaround or whatever. I mean, all these guys can do that. And whenever they get like multiple of them involved in an action at one time, or if it's like KD at the free throw line on like a post up and then one of Booker, Beal, or one pass away, like it's all good stuff, right? And all you can hope for is that they just keep up the urgency on offense, I guess. You know, don't take too long to get into your set. Don't get too stagnant. Don't get too into just dribbling for a million years before somebody shoots a 16-footer, even if they can make that 16-footer. I mean, of course, this is going to happen sometimes. You just don't want to overdo it. Um, of course, they're going to shoot more mid-rangers than everybody else. They're going to, uh, relative to the rest of the league, not shoot as many threes, not take as many shots at the rim. We all understand this. Actually, correction, they're second in mid-range jump shots for the year. They are first if you want to go, like, last 15 games. And so they're always going to be fighting the math some, but obviously they're better at making mid-range jumpers than your average team as well. But sure, it would be good if they got a few more threes up and a few more shots at the rim per game. Their offense can sometimes also have a bit of a turnover problem. And of course, not every turnover is going to be a live ball, bad pass or whatever, but uh, like Daniel Gafford and Royce, or not Royce, uh, Derek Jones Jr. putting two to the ball on book and then Kyrie's helping kind of hard out of the wing and then he's able to steal that or one time where Dallas' entire defense collapsed onto the paint. And KD tried to throw it out to Book, uh, but it was like Josh Green making an athletic play to steal it. Gordon's going to take his threes. Grayson's efficiency has been there. Royce is going to take him. Anyway, let's talk about Bull Bull for a little bit. And then we can go to the defense. He has been getting some consistent minutes lately. And, uh, you know, in that Houston game where he went off, you've got a number of plays where he just finished something at the rim. Like a play where it's a half-court possession where the Rocket is kind of rotating to get back, like, stationary on defense. And in that one moment, KD just makes a bullet pass from the top of the key to Bull Bull for a dunk. Or a play where he runs a handoff action with Book, which then becomes a screen. And then from there, you've got Bull rolling to the rim. And then it's a kick to Grayson Allen, who actually drives. And it's Bull Bull finishing around the basket. Like, that's good. Or like the Laker game where he's like tipping a Torian Prince three. Or cutting from the corner to get a pass from Nurkic as he's open, like off of a screen action in the middle of the floor. If Bull Bull can be an outlet for more finishes around the rim for these guys whether it's cuts, whether it's transition, whether it's putbacks, whether it's, you know, just another screen setter who can get downhill a little bit, and then defensively just his size and all that, like, yeah, that would be huge for him. Now, of course, the minutes for him this season overall have been inconsistent. In his year with the Magic, he started out getting a lot of minutes, then as the year went on, his minutes uh, trended downward. Like, he's just got to be good possession to possession, not just on the crazy, like, oh my god, Bull Bull just did something at his height, you know what I mean? Now, they did also just pick up Thad Young, who has played one game for them and did grab some rebounds in that one game. Let me just take a moment. Thad Young has been in the NBA for like 15 years now. Just kudos to him. He's stuck around this long. 
it's mostly just the, what does he still have left in the tank. I mean, if he can provide some more help on the boards, uh, still knowing what to do defensively, perhaps give you some rolls or cuts to the rim or just dunker spot things, a few of those per game, that'd be nice. I think he's definitely got some small ball five potential, more so off the bench. And uh, actually, the second that I saw that signing happen, I saw, well, what does Suns fans internet think about this? And the consensus was, can he please take some of Eubanks' minutes or potentially all of Eubanks' minutes? Anyway, let's talk about that defense. So when I have really locked in on Nurkic's pick and roll coverage, it does feel like lately it's a little bit of a mix of him at the level and then recovering back or just him in typical drop. Of course, when you're facing the Warriors, you got to be higher up on actions. But like, for example, their last one against the Rockets, there were some plays where Nurkic was just dropping on like a Jalen Green or Fred uh, pick and roll. Other times where he goes high up there for a second and then recovers back and there's got to be rotations on the back line. I mean, you know, Shen Goon also did not kill them in that last one. So like that's, uh, then we had the Dallas game recently where, you know, Nurkic, he was like at the level and then recovering back on some Luka screens. He was dropping on some. And I mean, Luka just kind of did his thing on that, you know, whether it's they call these step backs over Grayson Allen or, you know, get KD on like one switch and he beats him like, he was just doing his thing. I mean, you know, one time where Nurkic kind of stayed on him a little longer, dared P.J. Washington to make the three, he made the three, cool. But then they had that win against the Lakers where it was one of the rare times where the Lakers just kind of didn't get to the free throw line really at all. It does feel like they get not as adventurous as, let's say, like OKC when it comes to helping out of the corners or whatever, but they definitely do it more than your average team. And, you know, I will say Devin Booker does have these plays where he is uh, just kind of planting himself in front of the rim as an extra defender on, like, a guard driving or whatever, and he has, like, these pretty okay straight-up contests that I think are cool. Uh, KD as a help defender is, of course, good. And defensively, you know, I feel like going into the season, maybe I'm just not remembering this right, but I do think there was a lot of cynicism around this team because a lot of people didn't like, you know, the Beal pickup and three stars, whatever. But I do think a lot of people were leaning into this team's not going to be good on defense. They've been pretty okay on defense. They're like 13th in defensive rating. And when you go down the roster, yeah, it's not a roster that you think can approach being like an elite defense or whatever. But I think they've been better than a lot of people thought they were going to be on that side of the floor. But, I mean, look, they get teams to shoot a good amount of mid-range, which, like, yeah, Nurkic is in drop sometimes. That makes sense. Teams do not shoot well for mid-range against this team. Uh, for the season, this is just me reading NBA.com now, uh, teams shoot 37% from mid-range against these guys. They've also been doing some uh, KD at center lineup stuff, which is cool. Even if, of course, Nurkic is still super important to this team. And so, yeah, I mean, do I have a grand conclusion with this team? No, that's why they confuse me. Because I think there's nice things to say, and then you also just come back to, well, they clearly need Bradley Beal, and they've had him, kind of, this year. He's played 30 games, there you go. And along the way, he also had some bad breaks where like, he had to end up wearing a mask for some of those games as well. So what you're hoping for is that this team can just get into the playoffs and most likely be the fifth seed. And hopefully Beal can be uh, good to go and we can just see some crazy shot making from their top three guys and hopefully the ball just keeps zipping around enough where dudes are setting screens for each other or whatever to where it's not just, you know, iso ball. Even if within the iso ball, they can also still kill teams. And then defensively, like, I think it's fair to question in a playoff setting if this roster is good enough defensively, but I think they've clearly proven that they're not bad. And yeah, I mean, as of right now, they would actually be uh, slated to play the Clippers in round one and that would just be tough jump shots all over the place, man. I mean, obviously the Suns, like, if it's not their bread and butter, it's certainly a lot of what they do. And uh, for the Clippers, I mean, it would certainly be a lot of Kawhi taking those, uh, you know, those tough mid-rangers and stuff. So, I don't know. That's my big thing with the Suns. I don't know. But they're pretty good.